We're going to look at judgment. See, we all judge. It's just a natural thing. We assess and evaluate everything we experience, everything we see, everything that comes our way. We are a judging machine. Now, the problem with that is that most of the times we draw our judgment from our past, from our past experience. And so when we look at a situation, we tend to look at it and uh, associate it with something that we already saw in the past. And in doing so, we tend to decide what to do based on our past rather than based on the situation at hand. So now, the point is, how can we put some space in between the automatic judgment and the way we need to judge to be able to be effective in the specific situation? Now, the first chapter is about that. And you'll find a way to put some space and to be very effective in assessing and evaluating situations. Feedback is one of the most important mechanisms in nature. Animals use it very much to survive and to see where they are in relationship to their environment. It's a matter of life and death. And it's the same for relationships. In fact, feedback is what allows us to have a relationship with anybody or with any situation around us because we draw out of the feedback how to move ahead. Unfortunately, most of the people don't listen to feedback or don't look at the signs of the situation. And in doing so, we, they tend to go ahead with the, what they think it's happening rather than connecting with what really is happening. In this chapter, you learn how to receive feedback, how to read the signs around you of the environment, and also, which is very important for a leader, how to give feedback to your people such that they get the interest that you have in their growth rather than just a judgment for their things that they're missing. Reframing is an art. It's the ability to take the elements of a situation that we perceive as adverse or annoying and put them in such a way that the, the same situation becomes appealing. It is a very good tool for leaders that have to motivate people to do things that they would rather not do or that they resist to. There are three basic elements to do a reframe. The first is language, the second is lateral thinking, and the third is narrative. Through this chapter, you will learn how to use all three of them to take a situation to which people resist and make it appealing to them. Often leaders think that uh, if they speak clear enough, people will understand them and follow them. Then when a breakdown happens, they tend to blame their people for not listening well or for not paying attention enough. Responsible communication is about taking care of the impact of my commu communication rather than uh, speaking clearly. It is important because misunderstandings are one of the most common things that happens in companies when uh, we go about giving projects, when we go about uh, talking with clients or providers. On every side, we tend to believe that people understand us until we find out when the product is ready or when the situation is already done, that there was a misunderstanding based on the outcome of the situation. Now, this chapter is going to allow you to prevent any misunderstanding by taking responsibility of what people understand. And that's going to go much further, first, for the clarity of the work, second, for the relationship, and third, which is not the least part, it's going to allow you to save a lot of money, time, and energy. To be able to integrate diversity in a company, it's important to create an inclusive culture. That means that uh, whatever is different, instead of being the reason of conflict or resistance to one another, becomes an enlargement of the picture and an enrichment. 
for everybody on the team. Sometimes though, the difficulty is to diffuse resistances and transform those into the energy that it's needed to cooperate amongst different people. Now, the principle is very easy because if we are all the same, we have the same approach, we come from the same background and the same perspective, the things we do are gonna be limited to one perspective. But the ability to integrate different perspectives and different coming froms, it will enrich the project and it will make the solution an inclusive solution. Usually people think that conflict is a bad thing. I assert that conflict is actually a great tool. If you diffuse resistance and all the contrast it remains what's very essential to the relationship, the communication of the preference of each side. Now, the way we do that will in turn determine the strength and the longevity of the relationship. In this chapter, you will learn how to use conflict to draw value for both sides and come out with a version that satisfies both sides. And so conflict will become something you can look forward to, to be able to enlarge the horizon of the relationship altogether. Some people are loud and outspoken. So other people are very gentle and soft-spoken. Others use a lot of jokes when they talk and some of the people are very serious about what they say. Usually different styles of communication don't get along very well. They kind of clash on each other. They bother one another. In this chapter, you will learn how to have a, a flexible communication style. This doesn't mean that you will not have a preference. It only means that you will be able to calibrate the communication style of the other and then Based on that, you will communicate your message such that the other will receive it with any resistance to it. It's generally understood that influence is a function of the role. I believe, based on the many years of my experience, that uh, that's not really the case. In fact, I found that uh, some uh, secretary was more influent than the executive they were working for. The reason is because influence is based on trust, respect, and the ability to speak the truth to power without creating any resistance. In this chapter, you will learn how to develop your own influence, how to do it in such a way that you will diffuse any kind of resistance and you will actually draw people in and you will influence the direction of the group. Somebody has a gift in relationship. They can talk with people, they create community everywhere they go. On the other side, everybody has a, a preferred leadership style. For instance, I may like a certain style of leadership that may not be the best for somebody else. As we said in the last chapter, leadership is about influence and it's not about you do what I say. Now, in fact, when, when people force their voice on, the, on their own report or teams. Usually, in front of them, people would work and would do everything they have to do, but when the leader is off the camp, they all do what they want to do, or they do just the minimum to get by. Now, in this chapter, you will learn how to bring them with you by making people visible. By the way, as human beings, we all long to be visible. When I feel viewed, I would give everything to the leader. I would actually go the extra mile anytime that there is a need. And that's how you will learn in this chapter to lead your people. Intuition is an ancestral knowledge. It doesn't have anything to do with rationality or logic. In fact, when you have an intuition, at first, it seems like a crazy idea. And in fact, only when people see the results, they recognize that that was an intuition and not a crazy idea. Now, one thing we have to keep in mind is that the intuition speaks to us when we listen to it. The more we listen, the more it speaks. The less we listen to it, the less it speaks. 
In this chapter, you will learn how to embrace the natural gift of intuition and how to hear it and how to go with it. Now, obviously there's a risk because intuition could be misunderstood, assumption sound like the same, but the more you entertain it, the more you recognize it, and the more intuition gives you the ability to do extraordinary things. At the end of the course, after the 10 sessions, you will have the last video call with me. And in that call, we will go over the course together and I will hear and ask questions and see if you have integrated the principles and you are mastering the toolkit that I gave to you. And if you will, I will certify you as a, a graduate of a reframing the mainframe.